Yes, good morning. Uh, it's pleasant to have all each one of us connected again for our next class on emotional wholeness. Trust all of you are doing well. Welcome to those who are part of the uh, e-learning portal as well. Um, we trust that God's doing his work as we um, get into these uh, you know, important topics of emotional wholeness. Can we just start with a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, we look to your throne of grace for every learning and understanding we're going to have today. Lord, there are such beautiful foundational truths of what you have purchased for us. Lord, we thank you for all that you've done for us on the cross, taking our sins, taking our burdens, giving us healing in our bodies, in our spirits, and even in our souls. And even as we look deeper into the word today and understand the basis of our healing and our deliverance and the restoration for our souls, we pray that these truths will have deeper meaning and that we will take each of this by faith and live in freedom and victory of what you have purchased for us. We pray for each of us represented here in class. Lord, we thank you that you are doing your work in each of our lives. We bring before you our hearts and our souls and pray that each of us would be renewed, would be transformed, and Lord, healed and delivered from everything that captivates us. We pray, God, for those who have not been able to attend. Lord, we pray for your grace and mercy over them. Lord, that you would take away every difficulty so that they could join in and hear from your word. Thank you once again for your, for your peace and for your work for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, so I hope each of us have taken the time to go through these lessons that we have been learning in the last um, couple of weeks. Uh, you know, and not just like, like, you know, I always say, not just keeping it as an academic learning, but also taking it as a personal uh, lesson and a personal um, way of how we can keep ourselves restored and emotionally whole. So even as we're going through these lessons to recognize um, and to take in faith what we're learning so that we can walk in the freedom that God's given us. Okay. So uh, a quick recap about what we've been doing uh, the last week. Anybody would uh, take the time to share what what we learned last week? Anybody could quickly just unmute and uh, a few thoughts. You don't have to give me the entire lesson. So we can give everyone a chance to um, speak and uh, bring about what they they saw or what they've learned. Yes, open. This is open. So I'll give you a clue. We were doing, um, we started off uh, the week before with learning about um, the causes of problems in our soul. And last week, uh, the, the week before, we specifically looked at one area of where our problems uh, could come from, and that was more the way that, uh, uh, you know, we have uh, certain aspects of how we have led our lives or what, what we have been um, uh, engaged in that causes those problems. So the week before, we sp spoke about wrong thinking, certain mindsets, the beliefs that we have, the words that we speak, we spoke about um, that the sin, that the deep-seated continual sin, which can hurt us. We spoke about uh, experiences that, um, uh, that, that come to us, maybe not of our own doing, 
but because of uh, other, other situations, certain experiences that we, we go through that create emotional hurt, uh, false religions that we involve in, maybe commitments and practices that uh, have been made by our ancestors and also self-inflicting curses. So that's what we looked at the, pre the week before. Uh, what did we look at last week? Anybody? Is everyone sleepy or tired? Taisha? Yes, Taisha. Um, what stood out to me was the one about be careful about the words that you choose and the, the examples that you drew because um, it has really impacted me personally. And I have to be careful of the words that I choose and my way of mm -hmm. thinking as well. So I'm... Mm -hmm. I'm putting into practice, being very cautious of the words and how they can impact people. Even when I get angry, you know, mm -hmm. try to taper how I speak as well. Thank you, Taisha. Thank you for sharing how the lessons really helped you. Yes, Avni, good. Uh, thank you. So you said that we learned about how we can avoid opening doors for the enemy last time. So we were talking about how um, spirits or the uh, evil spirits cause <clears throat> um, problems within us and when we give an opportunity for them uh, to operate in our lives uh, there are times that uh, we allow uh, these spirits to oppress us and as a result you know have those emotions or the way that we, uh, we we experience difficulties in our soul. So that's one way. So we also spoke about how evil spirits gain access into our lives. We spoke about sin. When we continue in a place of sin, that opens certain doors. Um, and when we spoke about that, <clears throat> we also spoke about how um, you know, the evil spirits, we, we, we spoke about how it operates in groups and that sometimes it's just not um, one thing, but then there are multiple things that we may, we, may, we may open ourselves to. So initially, we may require healing for that. We may require deliverance and being able to move into that place of wholeness. So we, we looked at that part of it as well when we were talking about open doors uh, to to the uh, to the evil one. We spoke about the difference between possession and oppression. We determined that a believer uh, cannot be possessed, but definitely can be oppressed. Um, and oppression is where the evil spirit exerts its influence over us, causing torment or causing difficulty in one or more areas. And this could be any part of our beings are physical, our mental, our um, situational, um, our emotional part of it. Uh, apologies. Yeah, so the so we, we looked at <clears throat> that as well of how oppress of, of spirits can oppress us in different areas. We also spoke about how uh, when uh, oppression takes place, it can manifest in, it is identified differently. So there are evil spirits that are identified with specific emotions. There are evil spirits that are identified with uh, certain deeds. Uh, there are evil spirits that identify with certain physical conditions <clears throat> and evil spirits that are identified with certain situations. So we, we looked at all of this and uh, we also, at the end of the lesson, we specifically looked at how uh, there are symptoms of this activity of demonic, uh, of evil spirits being active in us and what were some of those symptoms we spoke about, how it uh, controls, how it enslaves, oppresses us, uh, you know, we, we, st we sometimes get um, moved to do certain things um, and uh, the, sorry, the spirit gets stirred up when we do certain things and, and other uh, reasons as well. So we also looked at certain pitfalls pitfalls that we need to um, avoid during 
um, you know, when we are getting into deliverance, uh, into the ministry of deliverance. Okay, so that's where you know, we stopped. Uh, I hope, you know, that that really refreshes your mind. If not, you know, I suggest you do go back and take some time to read those notes and uh, review that once again, because it helps us to be guarded. It helps us to, to know, um, be aware of what is around us. So today, <clears throat> we're going to move on to our next part, the next stage of uh, understanding about emotional wholeness. We looked at the problems. We looked at what causes these emotional problems. Now, what we're going to be looking at, what is it that we do about it? What is, um, what is the, uh, you know, whenever there's a problem, you look for a solution. Whenever there's a cause, you, you look for trying, uh, after looking at the effect, you're looking at how you can minimize the cause. So here, what we're going to be looking at, we're going to start on with the next part of it is, um, what do we do with regards to the problems we have? We need to be healed. We need to be delivered. We need to come to a place of wholeness. Okay? We cannot stay when you know that there's a problem. Like for example, when you know you're sick, you have a fever that you're manifesting, you need to look at the source and you need to find out what's causing the infection, what's causing the fever, and you've got to do something about that, right? So we are going to be looking at our healing and deliverance. What do we do uh, on this? Now, before we do that, we are going to be focusing on what is the basis. So that is one is we receive now, there are two parts to this, whereas we receive our healing and our deliverance. And the other part is, that's the second part of it. The first part is we need certain foundational truths uh, to, uh, to take on this healing and deliverance. So there are certain bases or certain truths that we need to be aware of before we go to a place of receiving. So these truths are, may, are I'm sure, uh, things that you already know, things that um, you have heard of as a believer over and over again. But it is a very strong reminder because this becomes foundational to our healing and deliverance. It's, it's like you cannot build a house without building the foundational beams because if not, there will not be stability in in the house so it has to be uh, what we are going to be receiving is uh, is is the part where where you're you are living by the basis of some of these foundational truths and that's what we are going to look at <clears throat> there are specifically um, you know five points that we want to bring out we will look at the first two today we're going to, we're going really slowly because i think this is like you know you chew the card and you you really dwell on that and and it really helps to uh, sink in because we have that time to do so so we're going to be looking at basically the first two bases today and the next three in the next week okay for for you to follow if you'd like to follow with me i'm on page uh, 14 of the uh, of the textbook or of the booklet that you have with you and uh, i encourage you to follow with me as we as we go through this and uh, you know we're going to be looking at some scripture and it will be really helpful if um, you can either have your bibles or uh, you have the notes uh, open so that you know you can follow along or what somebody can can read on with this so when we look at um the restoration of our souls we established um the truth that it's something that god desires uh, is that we are made whole not just in our spirits but in our souls and in our bodies so God desires that we are restored in our souls, in our bodies, as well as in our spirits. And the Lord is the one who has made the provision for the healing and the deliverance. This is not something we buy on our own or we achieve of our own or we receive of our own. This is something that God has given to us. He has provided for even the means 
of it. All that we are called to do is to receive what he has already given to us. And that, and a few of that is by our understanding, the renewing of what we believe and what we think. And the, the other is by faith to, to receive what uh, God has already provided for us. So when we look at uh, the, the base of our restoration is it is God. You know, Psalm 23, verse 3, a, a verse that is so very familiar to all of us um, that says, he restores my soul. Uh, he restores my soul. Now, when you look at the word uh, restoring, the word restoring in um, in the English meaning has uh, has the sense of giving a complete makeover. Okay, you it's a restoration means you are giving a makeover of something that has been maybe old, that has been broken, that has been um uh, you know destroyed ruined and giving a complete makeover of something that is fresh like you would have heard the words i mean you would have had a makeover you know a wardrobe makeover or you would have had a career makeover or you would have um uh, you know a hair makeover i mean there are very many things which you do not want to identify with that which is of the past but want to have something that is fresh and new. So similarly, when we talk about the word restore, there are specifically two functions or two meanings that we pick up from this word. And the first meaning that we, uh, uh, we look at is the word restore is to turn back or is to bring back to God or to return to God. So something that was will turn back okay so it is uh, the word restores means coming back or turning back into its original designed or original position or the way that it was designed uh, to be okay <clears throat> so you know for those of us who are in the council i mean i, I just see so many parallels of uh, how we see this lesson in the light of what we have learned in even in the counseling class so apologies for those who have not been in the counseling class but you know we spoke about the original attributes that god has created us with you know the attributes of being loved and being um uh valued being secure and being significant. So restoration means to come back to that design, okay? The second meaning that it, it brings about is, like we said, it is a repairing, it's a restoring, it is bringing back to a state of wellness or well-being and wholeness. It's a place of bringing back to the original position, but uh, through the process of repair, through the process of refreshing. It's changing what was there to what it was originally. And when we look at this verse, there is a source from where this restoration happens. And who is the source? It says, God restores my soul. He restores my soul. So God is the one who turns our souls back to him. He's the, he's the source of that. He's He's the one who does it completely, who does it wholly, who does it fully. And when that is entrusted to him, you know, we see that uh, there, is, there is a refreshing, there is a, rest, there is a complete restoration of what went wrong. In, if you look at, um, you know, that, that word restores, in some translations, it says he gives a new strength or he refreshes uh, my life. It says, uh, you know, there are some, some. I think some other places. He renews. He he brings back whatever that has been lost and whatever uh, has 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 been broken. So he is the one who brings back or turns back our soul towards him. So he is also the one who makes us complete, not just spiritually or physically, but also emotionally. So God it's it's the it's the source is god it comes from god the restoration comes from god 
Now, when we look at restoration, we are looking at restoration, uh, you know, in three parts, in three specific areas or parts. And it's important to understand these, uh, what these three parts are. So, you know, I, and, and I think for the uh, for the e-portal, I had actually bought about a question and said, you know, how do you see or what do you see is the difference between these three parts? And these three parts is one, it it is healing. The second is deliverance. And the third is moving into a place of wholeness, is wholeness. Okay, so it is healing. It is a deliverance. And it is walking into wholeness. So I'm going to open the same question to to the class here. What do you see is the difference in all these three: the healing, the deliverance, and the wholeness? Um, you could either put it up on the chat or maybe even unmute and speak. This is just to ensure that we are all awake and all in class and interacting. So I'm encouraging you all to speak. Yes, the silence, the spin drop silence. <clears throat> Uh, students? Go past that. Uh, yes, Mangi, go ahead. I think deliverance is from take, being taken from a place of bondage where you you were in prison to the place where you you are free, you are set free, and then start building from there. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mangi. Thank you for that. Uh, Shay, I think you had. Uh, Put your hand up, and I think you withdrew it. Sorry, my I, I lost. The, I, I didn't get the question that I was going to ask. What the question was again? Sorry. Yeah. So I asked what uh, we were looking at restoration having three parts. So the first is healing, the second is deliverance, and the third is walking into wholeness or wholeness. What do you see is the difference, or how do you? Uh, what what do you mean by these terms or these words? That that was what the question is. Uh, okay, so Anita said um, healing is for the part that is abused or deterior deteriorated. Um, Rose mentions healing is repairing into. Uh, into what has been broken. Deliverance is freedom from bondage. Wholeness is coming into what you are really meant to be in the eyes of God. Wonderful. Uh, Avani says, wholeness is coming back to the original state as God designed. Uh, Prabhaka has said, healing is uh, bringing back the broken. Deliverance is freeing from some hold or some pull. Wholeness uh, is complete work. Wonderful. Okay. Uh, Shri Kumar. Yes, Pastor. Uh, yeah. In my opinion, healing is uh, solving that problem, whatever he's facing. And deliverance mm -hmm. is uh, you are uprooting that root cause. Sorry, deliverance is uprooting that root cause. And mm -hmm. uh, journeying into wholeness, I believe that uh, you know you are leading that person to the um, in such a uh, way that um, he should never uh, need to go back uh, where he was uh, in the past, in that captivity. Thank you, Pastor. Okay, wonderful. Great. That's nice. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Shay? Yes, Shay, go ahead. Uh, oh, yeah, I was just going to say that wholeness is holistic. It's the whole being of a person. And then deliverance is being made free from... It could be a demon, it could be a habit, it could be something that has held you bound in one spot. And I think healing is specific. It, it targets one area of your life, you know, that has um, suffered for so long. So it's more like mending or um, in a way like restoring, basically, you know, treating a particular 
um, emotional wound or physical or, or or something that has wounded you for a long time. So treating it and then bringing it back to where it's supposed to be. That, I think that's what I'll just contribute. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Shay. Thank you so much. Uh, Kennedy, I think you also had something to say. Kennedy? Uh, meaning the, the act of repairing it to restore it to the original status of what, was, what, what has been damaged. Mm -hmm. deliverance is, is fighting against what's oppressing you or what's possessing you mm -hmm. so that you may return to your wholeness. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think uh, you guys have done, you know, understood this, this pretty well. Yes, Abhina says, turning back to the original. Avni says, once healing and deliverance uh, is done, then uh, is complete, we become whole. Okay. All right. Uh, Rose says, true wholeness is a result of becoming complete and unfragmented and being set free and delivered. Okay. Uh, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for sharing that because uh, that really helps to establish our own understanding of it, you know, as we, as we, as we move forward. So let's liken this to something as simple as a physical disease. Okay. I know it has not, it, it's very, um, uh, it's a very poor comparison, but just for us to get to understand the concept and then, you know, take it into what we are talking about when we're saying emotional healing. And we'll probably look through certain examples as we look at that as well. So uh, let's say, um, uh, you know, you have, uh, okay, I think uh, something that maybe I can, I can bring up an example. A couple of years back, um, uh, my daughter had a very small nick on her elbow, you know, just by hitting something, okay? And it was a really, really tiny, not even something that was even significant that any of us actually paid attention. So what uh, took place was, what she did was, you know, I, I did give her a piece of a cotton and a Dettol and, you know, got, just asked her to clean it. What she did was um, she cleaned it, but she kept she kept that piece of cotton and kept rubbing and rubbing and rubbing over that skin. And I think that cotton probably fell a couple of times. She was maybe eight, I think eight or nine at that time. It fell a couple of times. So she picked it from the floor and again, you know, rubbed, rubbed, rubbed. I, and I didn't know any of this. Um, anyway, a day later, um, what we did see is that that entire skin around that place, a good three to four inches on a circular um, fashion had kind of become, you know, some kind of a slight burn. And we saw that the skin was, was kind of burnt, all right, because I think it was the constant rubbing and it was the alcohol in the Dettol that really created that, that burn that was there. So, you know, and when we asked her, she, she said that she had done that. So we ignored it and said, okay, it's probably because of that burn, it'll probably go away. A day later, she um, she started saying that it it that that part was hurting. So I I definitely knew that there was some kind of an infection that had seeped in, um, but we just decided to leave it as it was. A couple a day hour or two days later, she be, she couldn't move the arm. And she started saying that it was paining within. It had it's it's paining um, towards the bone, and that's when you know we began to see that there was something much more serious than what we had expected. And uh, taking her to the doctor, we found that it was cellulitis. So wh whatever the infection had gone in and had seeped into the to the skin and closing in or to the bone, that she couldn't even move the hand. So it was cellulitis, and you know we had to. At emergency, take care of that condition. So let's look at this now. What does healing mean in a place like this? So healing would definitely mean that uh, you know that we we take care of the damage that is already done. In this place, there was that the infection had moved in, so we had to take ensure that the that already the the the. Uh, yeah, the the damage or or the or the issue that was there, or, or what was sick over there, had to be immediately treated and and helped, and then 
looking into further to see what has been the source of that. So that's why she was she was given uh, a full course of oral antibiotics as well as IV antibiotics. So there have been the bacteria that has gone in that has created a home for itself, you know, added in a lot more of other other friends and, you know, created an issue, we had to ensure that the source of that infection had to be killed or had to be taken off. And what that, what was troubling had to be, uh, we had to ensure that that was, in, that was out of her system. And then, you know, to, uh, so we did understand that she's got extremely sensitive skin and that every time that she she has a fall like this we've seen it multiple times that a small nick can create you know an itch and spots over we've seen that the skin has been sensitive so we've had to repeatedly after that entire episode be very careful when she's got nicks or when she's got cuts to not over do it or to be careful in the way it is treated to not expose to uh, to you know to a uh, to certain conditions that can go back to that place of um, you know severe struggles right now that's 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 an example that I'm, I'm bringing up there so that you know we could we could like I said it's a very poor comparison but for us to be able to understand it better when we're looking at um, emotional wholeness so in the same way healing the the restoration includes this first part of healing which like most of you said is bringing back from its place of sickness into a place of wellness so taking away or repairing that which was unwell and bringing it to a place of wholeness or to a place of wellness so whatever has been sick to to bring it back to a place of what it was okay so just like the arm that was infected to bring it back to a place of its functioning so that's what healing or uh, healing would mean bringing back or restoring what has been broken what has been um, damaged what is in despair what is in complete uh, sadness or vulnerability to bring it back to a place of wellness so that's what healing is deliverance is is looking at the source okay so it includes uh, taking them uh, setting somebody free from any uh, evil spirit or, or spirits that may be in operation that may be troubling the soul so actually looking at the source and we looked at some of that last week right we looked at those evil spirits so deliverance is freeing or casting out any spirit or any demonic activity that may be prevalent in the soul that may be creating that a repetitive uh, sense of despair, sense of frustration uh, or, or unwholeness that's there. Okay, so that's a deliverance. And the third one is wholeness, which is something that continues on thereafter. It is something that keeps going on. It's something that's ongoing. And these are certain things or aspects or practices one should do to ensure that they are in that place of wholeness and that place of wellness that was initially restored at the time when they were healed. Okay, so let's let's take an, an example of someone. Maybe there is a... Uh, uh, Sorry, Shay, do you have a question? I see your hand raised. Uh, may I just may I address your question once I'm done with the with the sorry, uh, that was that, that was a mistake, Pastor. Sorry, sorry for that. Sorry. Right. No, no problem, no problem. Yeah. So uh, let's look at an example, one a, a couple of examples. So um um, let's say there is a person who who's uh, who's coming uh, with with issues of lust. Okay, and there is a significant um, uh, manifestations as a result of lustful thoughts that one would have. So, um, you know, you come to a place of healing, come to a place of deliverance where, uh, you know, the spirit of lust and the spirit of adultery has been cast out, right? And, and they, they have come to a place of wholeness. But what would walking in that journey being is that not going back and going to a place of looking at um, 
uh, you know, at at uh, lustful material or looking at dirty dirty stuff or or engaging back into pornography, that walking in wholeness would mean to be able to renew one's mind, to transform uh, themselves so that they could walk in that place of wholeness. So that journey or that place of walking into wholeness is certain practices that we need to engage in so that we can keep ourselves in wholeness yes you may be healed but you can always go back to the same position that you were in for for let's say for example someone who's healed from uh from the habitual pattern of of using some kind of a substance uh, walking into wholeness means being careful not you know uh, going into a party where where substances are found, or engaging with the same company that uh, that that you have been involved in that tempts you into getting into alcohol or in, into certain substances, or um, uh, putting yourself in positions that will uh, that creates that sense of wanting to to go back. So that's what uh, wholeness would be journeying into that wholeness. Let's look at another example of <clears throat> of uh, um, uh, of people having uh, thoughts of self condemnation. You know, thoughts of uh, uh, not not feeling as if they're they're wanted or they're important or they're valued. So there is yes, the healing that takes place understanding that God loves them and God um, God is their source, is their fortress. There may be deliverance that takes place, you know, spirit of self-pity, spirit of depression, uh, all of that being cast out. But going back to a place of um, maybe, you know, when this person goes back back home, there are certain circumstances that that recreate these memories or these thoughts or you're put back into situations where this happens. So being able to renew the mind, being able to hold on to certain truths and promises of God that um, encourage them to see who they are in Christ rather than, uh, than taking on the labels or the words that people have used against them. So that's what the this entire uh, process would mean. And I see this sometimes like a process. So the healing takes place, the deliverance takes place, and then there is this walk uh, into, in, into wholeness journey. That is something that you continue doing uh, over and over consciously and intentionally with what we are going to be learning today. So uh, I trust that these, these three, this, this understanding is is clear. Uh, I just want to open up for any, I think, observations, any, maybe <clears throat> if there are some of you who can bring up certain examples, I think it really helps to consolidate this understanding that it's just not healing, it's just not deliverance, but it's also walking in this, in this, uh, in this pathway of wholeness that comes in together. Anybody, any questions or any observations on this or any thoughts? Um, Beth, you said, can we say that not all need healing and deliverance? So, Beth, I, I, I think, uh, uh, like we said, you know, we, we did, we were, we were careful to understand that maybe not all, all um, uh, emotional issues uh, could be, um, sorry, or not all emotional issues should be. Um, um, looked into as as evil spirits there may be certain things that you're probably doing so some may need healing and walks into that place of wholeness it's not that there is a source or there is a um there is an evil spirit working uh, uh, working in that you know the, the evil spirit may not it may not always be the work of the evil spirit. It could, it could also be the way that you're thinking, the way that there are certain things that you've taken a hold of. So healing comes there. But yes, walking into wholeness, I think, comes whether there is uh, no deliverance in between. So, so there is healing and there could be walking into wholeness or there could be healing and deliverance and walking into wholeness. I hope I answered that, Beth. Okay, uh, Shay, Shay, can I have yeah, your yes, question? Yes, Pastor, I have an observation and question. The observation I just realized was that for when it comes to wholeness, 
Uh, it has to be intentional, really. If really you want to progress beyond um, where you've been before to where God wants you to be, body, spirit, soul, and body. Um, then the, 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 the question I have basically is, um, how, do you, um, how do you gracefully point someone to something you've observed in their life that it's holding them bowed, but at the same time, you don't want them to run away from you, but you want to solve their issue. How do you, how do you get them to open up and acknowledge that this is an issue that can destroy you? How do you go about that? So I think um, one of the way that, that um, you know, because of the background that you come from with, with regard to counseling, something that I generally try not to do is maybe not pinpoint, but lead them through questions to ask them what they feel and what they think. So let's say someone who comes to you, you know, the previous week, they've gone through healing, they've gone through deliverance, and they come back and they said, hey, Jean, you know, all that was done that day, I felt was released. Monday morning, I found myself, um, you know, getting back into the same same condition. So how how would you gracefully do it is lead them back into asking, you know, what they have seen as the gap, what in their day or what in their spiritual routine or emotional routine is something that they felt that pulled them back into the same state that they were in a week ago. Excuse me. Bless you. So, yeah. So, uh, so when you do that, what you're actually helping the the person do is to really look back and find out uh, their routine, the, the what kind of activity they've been engaged at. So, uh, and and this is something as a practice that uh, you know I've seen that's really helpful. So the person will say, uh, "Yeah, you know, when I woke up this morning, I had decided that I would first spend some time on the word, but uh, you know, the first thing that I did was I picked up my phone, and one thing led to another, and this is where I caught myself in. Right. So there are certain practices that you see that the person may be engaging in that probably leads them to that place where they were before. So helping them see, uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm glad that you made that observation that the first thing that you probably need to do is get back into the word, renew your mind so that that becomes like a foundation for your day. That's a great thing that you did. How is it that you can work on this tomorrow. So they've kind of figured it out themselves that, you know, what I what I said I would do, the practice that I said I would do, I wasn't able to hold on to, and this is something that I need to change. And that's how uh, I think would be one way of doing it. I'm sure there may be other ways, and, and, and if there are any of you who've who felt and tried that there are other ways, you know, I'd be so glad to hear, and, and you know, we could all learn from that. So I'm opening that back to you. Um, if there's anyone. So that's what I would do, Shay, to, to bring about that. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah. Uh, Christopher, I think you have a question too. Uh, yes, uh, Pastor, thank you. Um, I was just uh, trying to understand this, this, uh, this uh, you know, in a sense, process of, of uh, this healing and uh, the uh, uh, deliverance and you know, developing uh, fullness. Uh, so I just want to understand: is this, is this, is are there actually stages in in this process? And um, uh, in the in the in the in that healing process or sub process, um, we're talking about repairing and you know making well what is sick and damaged as per the notes. So um, that is you know kind of reaching us a particular state of, you know, um, uh, of uh, being able to, uh, you know, get that person to that level. And then there's this deliverance part, which is talking about, you know, how to get um, setting free from the work of demonic spirits. And uh, so that that in itself is also a, 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 another stage, whether it comes after healing or, you know, is it 
is it coming you know is it is it pattern for our you know is it both are they both kind of kind of going together and then uh, the ongoing uh, journey of course is uh, you know is something that will need to happen uh, uh, to maintain you know that level of uh, wellness and um, to be able to maintain a strength you know the strength to you know to ensure that nothing you know it doesn't we don't go back to uh, you know that uh, uh, that uh, that need for 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 repair so i'm just trying to understand you know are there stages in it and um, are they sort of quite a kind of discrete uh, stages as in separate uh, and uh, if you could just supply that to you know those examples you gave us you know about the uh, lust and um, you know um, uh, someone who is uh, addicted to uh, to to substance uh, substance abuse so could you if you could just give us some clarity on that yeah, so these these stages, um, you know, what happens in these stages is our second part where we, how do we receive this healing and deliverance? And uh, as, yeah, if, if you, you know, if you go a little further into the notes, uh, and I'm just trying to pull that out, uh, if you actually look further into the notes, you will see, um, you know, for our better understanding, there is a process. Um, you know, where first and foremost, if you, uh, I'm looking at page 21, if you look at it, there are those 10 points that we will need to do um, uh, so that, you know, we come to that place of healing and deliverance. So if you look at those 10 points, which we are going to look at a lot more in detail is repenting, is asking the Lord for forgiveness, uh, believing in what Christ did, um, being able to release the forgiveness to, to someone who has disappointed or uh, hurt you, taking on the power of God's word, ensuring that you don't live in those old deceptive, deceptive ways, um, ensuring that there aren't entry points that you've left open, uh, doing all that you can to renouncing the work of the enemy in your life and bringing back to a place where you are consecrated to the, to the work of the Holy Spirit. So there are, yes, there are, maybe a process in how you do that. And uh, that's something that we will be looking at in the weeks to come, uh, Christopher. So I don't want to jump the gun and go there already. Yeah, no, so just at just a high level, I just wanted to understand, uh, um, do we, does healing happen? And then, uh, then after that, uh, does it, uh, do we need to do deliverance if, it, if it's necessary? And then, yes. of obviously, the ongoing process of uh, of healing, so that yes. there there is a there is a sequence progression. There is a progression. Yes, yes, absolutely. So healing healing needs to come, and if healing needs to take place, there needs to be repentance first and foremost, right? And and then comes in. Uh, so it's only when there is a place of cleansing. Does is there a place of you know you you're you're identifying the source and uh, uh, casting out the source and then walking into that place of journey. So yes, a sequence or a progression. You're right. Yes. Right. Thank you. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, we're, we're close to the hour. Uh, let's stop for a break. It's uh, 10.50 on my clock and we will return at 11 o'clock after the break. See you soon.